How do you ask for more money from a client when the original scope of work changes? Well, that's exactly the situation this caller is in, and I give him a few tips to navigate the situation. Please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to hear me coach more live callers just like this one. William, welcome to the show. How can I help? Hello, sir. Yeah, so I have an issue I want to talk about. I've been contracted to uh, write a piece of software for a couple of schools. It's for young students, you know, to just teach them some um, internet basics. So I showed my client the first draft of the software. Then they started to ask for more features that were not initially talked about. And so like the first time they asked, I like went back and took another week and a bunch of hours and, and put them in. As I was working on that, they phoned me and said, oh, and we just thought of this other thing. Could you, would you mind putting this in there as well? Mm. And so like, I'm afraid if I don't do what they want, I'll lose them as a client and it'll hurt my reputation. But it's much more time than I want to spend than I feel like they're asking for stuff that we never talked about. Yeah. Do you have a clear scope of work outlined in your contract with them? Yeah, so this is kind of the thing. Like we do have a we do have a written agreement, but like I didn't get really super specific with the features and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I know and I know it's hard. Let's definitely talk about how to respond right now, but before we do, just curious, is there anything in this situation based on kind of what's going on that you think you would change going forward with your contract process? Like, I know that scope of work is, especially with software, when you're developing things, things come up. I know it's tough to go exactly what you're going to do, but it could be like a block of hours instead of just like, here are the things that we're going to do. Something like this. So just so you know exactly what you're getting into and they agree to it. But yeah, what lessons do you think you've learned for the contracting process going forward. Right. I mean, I think trying to limit the number of hours is, is one way to go and that's possible. But I think I think getting super specific about like the features, like the mm -hmm. listing the features, li listing the sub features and, and writing it out really clearly and going over it like verbally step by step with the client before we start. I think that would be super important. Yeah. And then and then also even like maybe like I don't know if this makes sense, but like brainstorming, like other things that they could add if they wanted yeah. to, like, should we put that in and so that I'm already anticipating what they might ask for. Does that sound right? I think that's a great idea. I would call that your like your intake process. So when you're intaking a new client or a project, you're really digging into let's go through step by step what we're going to need here. Let's brainstorm on what we could be needing and stuff like that. I think that's great. And then that way you're really clear and you know that things are going to come up as you're working on it. And when they do, you have a very clear way of saying, okay, great. I would love to help you with that. I'd love to build that in. Here's what it's going to cost to build that in on top ah, of see, the current scope of work. Yeah. See, that's the other piece is like, I think there should probably be something in there about like, if you do want to add something, yes. this is how we do it. This yes. is how much it'll cost. This is how we amend the contract, that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. See, I don't have any of that in there. And that was my other question is like, how do I ask for more money? Because we have we don't have an agreement in place on how that works. So what I would probably do is get on the phone with the client. I would just be very open with them because and, and say something to the effect that you said to me, which was like, I really value you as a client. I want to keep you. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to lose you as a client. I don't want to, you know, have a sour relationship. These new features that we're now adding are really, in my mind, beyond the scope of what we originally agreed to. And it seems to me like I would need to add more, you know, hours or paid hours or whatever to this project in order to get these done. Does that seem fair to you? What do you think about that? What's your sort of thoughts around this? You know, and just get them to, to talk a little bit because they might say, you know what, you're right. Tell me how much it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. Right. So you don't know. They, they could be OK. And if they push back and they say, no, this was all part of the scope. Then at that point, I would say you might want to kind of go back to the drawing board with the contract and just say, OK, I want to keep you happy. I want to do this for you. But at this point, let's get really clear now on the scope. And I'm going to write out the scope. I'm going to write out the features that I'm going to build for you. And so if anything else comes up after this, then we can go look at, you know, adding more to the contract or something like that. So Right. So if they push back, it's almost like uh, I just kind of got to eat it because I, I wasn't, it was my fault for not being clear in the first place, but then not making the same mistake twice, basically. Exactly. I would, if they push back, I would definitely now put things in writing. 
get clear on what the features you're building so that they can't come back another three weeks later and say, wait, we actually thought of this new stuff, you know? So they have, there's a, now a clear mechanism if they think of new stuff for them to add it. Yeah. All right. That sounds good. Yeah. And it's, and listen, any consultant contractor has been there. We've all been there where we get to the point where something like this happens and we go, ah, that's not in my contract. I got to revise the way I do contracting. It's a uh, great lesson. It can be a kind of a, a time costly mess, uh, lesson, but it's a great lesson because from going forward, this is probably not going to happen again to you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hopefully I will remember what happened. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just go back to the contract, revise your contract. So for the next project, you have it in place. All right. Hopefully that was helpful, um, you know, to hopefully you have some steps now to, to feel like you can move forward. You know, if they push back and they said, no, this is part of the scope, are you okay with eating that time just to, to keep the client happy? I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a bummer. Like, yeah. it's, it, cause it's a, it's a chunk of time. I do divide my time between being a, a, a computer guy and a musician. So like, mm. I, I'm not like super, you know, super flowing in the cash. It's like what you're saying. It's a learning. It's like, I'm paying for the learning experience. Exactly. Um, and so it'll be, a, it's all good. It'll be good. Okay. Glad to help. Hopefully this helps and uh, hopefully they don't push back and they're, they're willing to, to pay a little extra for the extra work. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks. You've been really helpful, Dr. Pollock. No problem. Thanks, William, for coming on. Hey, thanks for tuning into the Peace Building with Dr. Pollock show. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more workplace conflict advice. Share on social media if you think your friends and colleagues would benefit from this episode. And if you have a workplace conflict and want to be a caller on our show for free coaching and advice, please email podcast at pollockpeacebuilding.com. Thanks.